Welcome back to Surface Unscripted. There's no place to run. There's no place to hide. So regrettably, we are sitting here with the Leinster guy, Tiernan. Uh, Hello. I don't even know I wanna, if I want to ask you how you're feeling at the moment because I could tell with your smug smile how you're feeling. Mm. But anyway, tell us. Oh, just I'll, I'll dream all night that Karen Friday drop goal going over. I'm sure you did as well. Yeah. Uh, what a win. What a win, just like in general. Come off that he, series. He, especially he joined the dreams, stream right? and he's like, did, did you dream about Frawley last night? Did he go and haunt your dreams? And to be honest, right, I slept like a baby. But obviously, it's not a nice feeling. Like I mentioned it yesterday, no. and I was like, even even though we made the comeback and it was a one-point game, literally a drop goal at the end, like, I don't like the fact that you guys won the final game. It's kind of the same for us last week, though. Like, we kind of lost it the last few minutes. Yeah, like, exactly. But, like it, it but it's reversed. like I would have rather lost last weekend and won this one because then you end the series on high. Yeah. And now yeah. it's like we lost the second one. So you guys, both teams played each other once, made improvements, and you guys best bested us when when you made improvements. And I've but seen you got a week on... happiness and we get longer. Yeah. The one thing that does frustrate me from from a lot of the South African fans, and don't get me wrong, I've done it before as well, is is ref blaming. The ref was good last night. Just, I, I've got I've got no issues with how the game was ref. There was no calls that went to you that should have been ours or anything like that. I thought Carl Dixon had a good game. The TMOs had a good game, especially comparable to in comparison to to last weekend. Um, I think you had some rightful um, what can you say like complaints about the ref. But I think overall this weekend it was just a solid game of rugby. It was a proper yeah. test. Match. Right, and we'll we'll get into the nitty gritty because I'm sure you wanna you have a few things to say. Um, but overall, if we're just going from a neutral's perspective and everything, massive heats, blood all over the field, mm. brutal game, physically matched it, um, and kind of like even though we didn't score a try, it was still it felt like a bit of end to end rugby. So overall, it's just a quality, quality game, game, right? It's hey, going for the neutral, definitely. Yeah, entirely. of course. Uh, I think. What do you think about the fact that you didn't score a try in that game? Like, um, I don't, I don't think we had many try scoring opportunities in the second half because kind of when we got the penalties, we just kicked that goal. Yeah. So it was either like either we're gonna go for the mall, which was so dysfunctional. Credit to you guys for, for the way that you guys handled the mall. Yeah. Um. But in the first half, and and I'll get into this now, it's like. I, I do not understand what we did in the in that first half. Like, so we had the ball five meters away from your line, right? Or was it at the start of the second half? I can't even remember, right? Mm-hmm. Had the ball on your line, two meters away, and Faf de Klerk decides there's four players in front of me. Let's yeah, grab let's the kick ball. it into them. So I do not sad. understand. There's no penalty advantage, nothing, right? Mm-hmm. I, I understand our attack was a bit dysfunctional at that moment, but all we needed was a pickup and drive just for one time and reset the attacking phase, if you get what I mean. Like, I mean, seriously, I do not understand why we went that desperate. We worked so hard after your first, I think it was, what, 12 minutes blitz that we got to your 22. The first time we get the ball at your 22, you can literally see Calvin Nash in the backfield Andre Pollard decides, I'm just going to dink it into his into his arms for you guys to call Mark. I'm like, yeah. we don't even have an advantage or anything. The backline's flowing. The backline got us to where we are. Right? It's like they're playing, it's... they're playing like they have an advantage. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, like, what? Why? why is our first thought put it on the boot in an attacking play? Like, I understand if you're going nowhere, maybe yeah, then you'd switch it up a bit. But we haven't even tried to go anywhere. There's literally a guy in the backfield I couldn't understand it. Then we have a five-meter mall, right? Joe McCarthy does brilliantly to turn that ball over. We win the scrum. It's in the corner. Just go for the mall again. See if you can work it out. We decide we're getting three points. I mean, fair enough, we kick the three points. But in my head, I'm like, you've showed intent of going for the try. We've had a little slip. We, we let Joe McCarthy slip through. Just focus on that and fix up and actually try and score the try now. Right, get some dominance in the game. 
Because that's after we scored the first three points. If you get another try, all of a sudden it's 10-10. Any, any, anyone's game. Couldn't understand like... for the life of me what, what, what we were doing at certain points in this game. Well, in the first half. You just weren't playing with confidence at all, I don't think. Especially no. after that fast work mistake and um, when Kevin Nash got the ball. He's just kicked your points. He didn't go for any try opportunities. Yeah, and that's what but I really that, like that's also, it's, it's also credit to Ireland. Like, the way the the intent you guys showed in that first ten minutes was crazy. Like it really put us on the back foot. Even in your defense, right? You you forced errors out of us. Now, of course, we made unforced errors as well, as I just mentioned. But you kind of also make unforced errors by you forcing us mm. into into certain things. So I have to give credit to Ireland for everything. Like Ireland were almost perfect in that first half, in my opinion. Like I can't think about too many mistakes. That you guys made that try that you scored with with Osborne and and uh, Connor Murray, just the like the little offloads, the quick hands. Mm -hmm. It was a brilliant try. Like I'm thinking, how do you defend that? Because yeah. you're running onto a prop who doesn't doesn't know who's who's going to get the ball, slash through the line, quick little offload. There you go. Just a beautiful try. That's what that's beautifully so worked. Mm. Hey? It does say we're so good that quick offload game, just unpredictable. We weren't doing that for a while. And now we're doing yeah. it again. Same with Leinster. Leinster used to do that, but now they stopped doing it. And now suddenly go back to Ireland and look how good all the players are. So yeah. I think that really kills the news. Yeah, so... But, and then, obviously, to round it off, like, the score was, what, 10-6 just before half-time? And then... Hmm. I can't understand for the life of me. Literally, we did it last week, and they spoke about, you guys should just leave the ball because it's going to go dead, right? We decide to once again kick that ball straight into the in-goal in area. Like, why? What is, what is the point of that deep of a kick? Your chasers can't compete with the ball because you're anyway just going to catch it, run it up a bit, and then kick it out. Like, that five meters, ten meters that you guys maybe kick it shorter if we kick it deeper, that doesn't make a massive difference, right? So just rather do the normal kickoff that we've always done where your wings can compete for the ball and make a good tackle and you put pressure on the kicker. But no, we kick it deep once again. Then we have a drop out, right? Because this irked me. A drop out in the second half, the first drop goal that Frawley scored. We let Andre Pollard kick it, who just limps it with no chases or anything. I don't know where we decided to kick that. Why don't you let, if you have a drop out, you're like... Why don't you just let Sasha kick it, who can kick twice as far? Because there's always going to be that drop goal threat, right? Like, why, why are you just kicking it to the middle of the field where they're just going to drop it back? I do not understand for the life of me what, what the thinking was at certain points in this game. I don't get that either, because you basically just handed that drop goal opportunity for it to us the first goal. Yeah. At the same time, just kept kicking to our backfield. We kept got, yeah, getting the opportunity to run it back. Like, yeah. I think you really lost the game. And they said at the end, no, this is an Africa's game to lose. And look what happened. Gave us a drop card opportunity. Yeah. It, th this was, this thing, was yeah. overall a tough pill to swallow. Because yeah. after last weekend, it was like, okay, we've got that little hoodoo off our back. Um, World champions, you finally beat the, the, the team that everyone's been talking about. And now you need to go and do it twice just to cement it. But now we get beat. And now it's like, hmm. No, no, we go home. We go home. Like an Alta Series trial, but you know, we went home with the win. Exactly. Yeah. Like that's just the whole thing. And something that really annoyed me was the way that we worked so hard to get our points. Credit to Ireland because you had to make us work hard. We get our three points. Literally, I think it was a minute later. Uh, was it was it Osborne or um, Crowley that, that put up an up and under? Peter Steff just. Silly obstruction sees sees Henshaw chasing oh, yeah. the ball, moves in front of him. Like it's we've worked so hard for that three points, oh, yeah. and then you just blatantly give it away again. Like the, the same with Quacha Smith diving over a rock. Like I understand you you caught up in the moment or something, but that is where you need to use your brain. You need to think. Like Quacha, you you know your legs are above your head. You know you can't go for that ball. Like it's it's stupid mm. penalties that we gave away. The, the dropout again, just giving that away. Like, obviously, Ireland pr played brilliantly, but we gave away so much, like, stupid stuff. But overall, I, I still like think we deserve so. to win the game in, in the grand scheme of things. So. You were talking about obstruction there. 
we talked about the very last minute there, Kerr Friday drop goal. Cheston Colby chances in her football yeah. and just falls over trying to get a penalty. What was yeah. he doing? That was that was stupid. I I I think that it's literally like a desperate coping mechanism of what so funny watching the back because he's just running and he just slips under him and like Darce or wherever it was he just looks down and like what are you yeah, doing? Yeah it's Finney Beam, right? Because Finney Beam yeah, obviously yeah. moved moved in front of him but like 20 meters away like the that obstruction but I don't even I don't think, even think he moved he like he like leaned a bit or something. Yeah but I don't like even think Finney Beam is the one that like if there was obstruction it wasn't Finney Beam. like it was yeah. Potentially Doris, because like when Chesna and Colby ran, Doris like leaned a bit right next to the rock. But that also isn't even obstruction. Like even if they held him right and didn't even let him run, I would still not give it obstruction because he was never getting to to Frawley. Frawley was so yeah. far away. So I've got I've got no issues with any of those things. Like put the dime. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, yeah. I can't he, he's probably excited for for the Euros final tonight. That's that's well, must be must be playing in it, like <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, probably. I I don't know, but ov- overall, when when we look at the this series, like what what would you say is like the positive takeaways for you from Osborne from and Irish Karen Frawley. Osborne hey? and Karen Frawley, two players that like Andy Farrell sees, Leo Cullen doesn't like Karen Frawley. Has to be ten for Lens next season. It's just not even a debate anymore. He's so unpredictable. The drop kicks are amazing. His goal kicking is arguably the best in Ireland. I don't know why he's yeah. not being played at ten out um, over Rossburn. Um, Jamie yeah. Osborne. No one saw him as a fly half when people when he was getting picked as a fly as not a fly. Sorry, uh, a fullback. No one saw him as a fullback. And once he got picked there, everyone's like, "What are you doing?" And now look, he's yeah. The, this this has given you. This has given you like healthy competition like an healthy issue to have yeah. in terms of when Hugo Keenan comes back he's obviously the first choice but Osborne has really put up his hand there like you know you've got a solid backup and obviously you still had Jimmy O'Brien um, when you look at your tens now it's like okay Crowley's there but when he's off it we won't think twice before throwing in the likes of a Frowley there we've seen how good he can be you see the the other threat that he that he poses like Frawley will easily be, in my opinion, your your player twenty three if you go for six two split. The fact that he can slot onto fullback or yeah. or that ten jersey, um, I, and I think he's played inside centre for Leinster as well, if I'm not mistaken. He played pretty much the whole back line, but I think as a ten, that's Crowley has competition yeah. in. Like Frawley suddenly after that game, is a ten. Leinster have to play him there next season. Yeah, and I think they're going to be competing with each other now for that jersey because Crowley yeah. he had a bit of an off game, and look at Frawley way better. Yeah. Yeah, and Ringrose had an absolutely outstanding game. Joe McCarthy looked oh, like a Super Saiyan Goku. Um, he was insane. The line breaks, just the dirty work once again. By the way, I know I know Doris got sent off for the crock roll, but that was one of the worst cleanouts I've ever seen from James Ryan. Like that was utterly it was dirty. terrible. I don't know what they're doing there. Like, like they could that, be easy about got carded. Like, Dude, that could have been a red. I'm not, not saying it should have been a red, but like if you put all of that, all of it in context, right? Like Malcolm Marks just came back from injury from an ACL. He's bent over, right? James Ryan doesn't do a normal crock roll. He dives in over him and crock rolls him onto the onto his legs that are already strapped. Like his full body weight is there. Crock rolls him off the. That is yeah. ugly. That is horrific. Yeah, it could have been bad. Yeah, I mean. Like obviously uh, they gave it to Doris yeah, because like, he put him in that position, but oh, uh, he got he got away with that one, James Ryan. Did. But uh, he really did. Yeah. Anyway, I was like, wondering why Doris got it because you know Ryan comes in full speed pretty much. Yeah, but I think it's the because they said like it's it's Doris put Doris like, started it, yeah, initially like in that position. Like he, it's two crock rolls, two players crock rolled him. That's kind of yeah. But as like from a from a South African perspective, I'm not going to be one of those guys that all of a sudden. Um, starts doubting our team and everything yeah. because you bet if you missed that drop goal, right, we would have had a totally different discussion. You would have, you and would all have of a sudden, the, the discussion switches from South Africa never having a, a or a never say die attitude, really showing that winning mentality in terms of coming back when when the odds are stacked against you. Like that's kind of the thing where that's how close this game was. Like we could have had a different discussion. But I have to give it to Ireland because you guys played absolutely brilliantly. And I'm not all of a sudden going to say, oh, 
we're going into this rugby championship and I'm going to doubt every game and stuff because like we have a new coaching staff. We played brilliantly against Ireland. Um, I'm not all of a sudden going to say we played bad because we showed real fighting spirit to get back into the game. So I don't get why people are all of a sudden so negative because last week we were on the top of the world. You felt in the dumps. You you all of a sudden called this two friendies, and now you. I, I still think they're friendlies, but I'm not going. To yeah, visit. no, I'm not. I'm not going for that. Um, so yeah, I'm not all of a sudden going to start to sit here and, and doubt South Africa. I'm still proud of the yeah. boys, but obviously it's it's a sour sour taste losing against the Irish, like especially when you've been like cocky and stuff about it. So it is what it is. Yeah. Do you have any? Like... Mention that that friendly yeah, thing. Yeah. It's like I I honestly think so. Did they, they're they're still friendly in my eyes, you know. It's not a competition. I think they should make this into a Nations League. Have it like, you know, you get the top six teams in the world or whatever. You get New Zealand, South Africa, like England, France, Ireland. What, in, instead of the, the six nations? Instead of the... these, instead of these, uh, like, this is what you do instead of the autumn and the summer tours. You just do it a Nations League kind of thing. Yeah, but then, yeah. then the issue would always like be the travelling. Who's going to play home? Who's going to play away? Because obviously you tour to us yeah. now and end of the year we are travelling. So it's like, That's I don't know. Yeah, because it's, it's just the same. I, I always think about how to grow the sport, you know, and it's not going to change because it's always just Ireland, England, France, and New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, touring each other. That's it's all, all it's ever going to yeah, be. Yeah, but like. it's, it's still great. Like, I it wouldn't is really good rugby, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I wouldn't, as, as I've said to you before, I wouldn't remove any international rugby. Like, this, this is the epitome of the sport, is international yeah, yeah. rugby. I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, okay, a season's too long. Let's let's take away a tour. I would rather cut some of the URC games. I'd rather cut That's some fair. of the Champions Cup games. Maybe there's too many teams involved in, in the Champions Cup, for instance, like that. Like, you don't take away international. Yeah, I don't think it's national. It doesn't mean you just like, change it up a bit and make League. Yeah, and or, and I mean, if I just oh, speak from just from like my country's perspective, like obviously the Stormers and the Bulls and stuff, we have a lot of supporters, and you can see that when you when you post content on, for instance, TikTok, like you get a lot of engagement. But it's nothing compared to when the box play, because when the country plays, yeah. if all those teams come together, all those teams come together, and and the people come together to support a nation. I mean, there's nothing bigger than that. There's, it is really there, there's no sport. Well, football maybe, but that's more passionate. About about a game that then like rugby. Well, that's how I feel. Um, so international rugby stay the way that it is. If you want to cut anything, go cut call, some call, of the call zebra. Hey, call zebra instead. Yeah, I don't know. Just because the season is long, but I'm not going to use I, that. I like, as, I like as the it. tours, but yeah, I think it would be a lot more exciting if it was a league, if it was kind of a world league or something. But they're trying. Actually, they are. They're doing that anyway. Jeez. They're making it into a into a what? Into some world nations league thing, world rugby. Oh uh, yeah, like, I a, think this is. I haven't, this, I haven't really looked into it. I, I don't even know. Like people Dude, in the this comments year can probably tell us that. Four year, I think. Anyway, but let's wrap up the video. Yeah. Um, do you have any any final thoughts on the series as a whole? I'm sure you've got a lot of backlash from the South African fans, but now that it's done and dusted, Jeez, sure you win or you lose, in. they they come either way. Like so, yeah, but, fair but then, yeah. I mean, it was a convincing win, obviously, you know, and we could we really could have got the win last weekend if we just kind of they kept their heads. But you know, we have a lot of injuries. It was great to get the win on the last game. Kieran Frawley, we've seen he's great at ten now. Jamie Osborne, seen he's great at fullback. Other players like John McCarthy, Ken Darst, they've all been amazing. So I don't, I think yeah. this is massively benefit to the team. The players, the yeah, yeah. are now going to, especially Leinster, are going to benefit from hopefully having Kieran Frawley at 10. Just you know what makes me a bit nervous? So many right? positives. Yeah, yeah, you can take a lot of positives, like especially with all the injuries and stuff. Um, I looked at our squad yesterday, right? And I didn't realize I'm playing a game of spot the under 30. Like Do you know, we, next all our players is like thirty and yeah. older. Um, it does make me a bit nervous. I'm not gonna lie, because I don't want to go into the next World Cup. Like obviously that's a couple of years away, but then thinking like, okay, there's a bunch of thirty five year olds here on the field. They're so, saying if you keep playing that team going this next World Cup, like that same team, uh, there's the youngest player will be Kurt Lawrence, and he'll be thirty one. 
So you just need to suddenly find a lot of kind of under twenty talent, and your under twenties are not winning. No, but dude, you don't need coaches, to worry. Though. You don't. You don't need to worry about that. Our under twenties haven't been good for for quite a while, and still we're doing well. Like there's a lot of talent that comes through. The issue is just for me, like giving them some game time. Like we saw Sasha yesterday, twenty two years old he's, or twenty one years old. He's so absolutely good. insane. Like absolutely insane. Obviously, I start him over Pollard. Damien Damien Willem says is, is 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 still young. Um, <clears throat> we've got a bunch of young props coming through, as always. So they're still like class, and obviously our backline yeah. or our, our wingers and stuff will never just all of a sudden be bad. It will find a matter and stuff. So we've got a lot of players that can step up. The issue is just when are they going to step up? Like, are we going to go through this whole year backing this team? Or are we going to say, okay, we slowly but surely going to get more guys involved? So, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that was kind of my thoughts. Like, your team anyway, is old. I'll wrap up this video by just yeah. leaving you with one final thought. And you can either smile and laugh it off or have it ruin your day. But we you have won this series. Quite a or something. No, we, are, we have won the series on aggregate. And me and you made a pact and we said on aggregate scoreline we will go. <laughs> That is my little co coping mechanism. We'll give, we'll give him, we'll give him this coping it. We'll give him this coping mechanism, sure. Uh, anyway, as yeah, always, guys, you thank you very much for watching. Series draw. That, yeah, bro, a series draw yeah, should feel is. like a series win. Like when when all the well, odds are well. stacked against you. Fair enough. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. Do please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, we do appreciate you, Leinster. My man, thank you for coming on, as per usual. And see you next time. Thank you. Yeah, see ya.